Hi, dear students. Today we are going to start very interesting uh, topic in physics called uh, nonlinear optics. So we have studied optics in different ways. We have studied linear optics in your uh, school level and uh, degree level and so on. And at PG level, you already studied the quantum optics. Okay. Now we are going to deal the nonlinear optics. Now again, the nonlinear optics has classical part and quantum mechanical part. Okay, but uh, what we are dealing now is uh, basically the classical part of nonlinear optics. We are not going to deal about uh, uh, the quantum nonlinear optics. Okay, so first of all, what is a nonlinear optics? When uh, we'll observe the nonlinear optics. Okay, we already know uh, many optics, many optical phenomena classically. And uh, some of the phenomena in the optics are uh, basically we can call uh, reflection, transmission, and we have polarization, interference, diffraction, So there are many phenomena in optics we already studied and uh, we could able to explain all these phenomena. Uh, some of it uh, we can explain use just simply using the ray optics and uh, some of it uh, required the wave optics or electromagnetic wave theory. Okay, so, um, uh, so these uh, we have already studied uh, in detail. Okay, and then uh, what is the uh, specialty or what is, uh, what is actually dealing with uh, nonlinear optics? So will it uh, show any new phenomena or will it uh, changes uh, uh, these phenomena? So what, what is actually this nonlinear optics? So the first thing I have to remember, the nonlinear optics is uh, based on the material. The nonlinear optics is based on the material response to the optical field, okay? So that is the first point I want to make. The nonlinear optics, is based on nonlinear optical response of the material to the incident optical field. Okay, so the incident optical field is something, but we already know that the light is electromagnetic wave. So the incident optical field means uh, the incident electric field. So how the material responds to this, uh, uh, the incident electric field. So if the response is nonlinear response, then we can observe the nonlinear optics, okay? So all the optics that we have de dealt here in the, uh, the classical optics, uh, basically uh, is a linear optics. So there, the material, so all the material that is in the reflection transmission, uh, all the material uh, is um, responding linearly with the optical electric field. Okay, so then uh, what actually decides the response is linear or not? To in order to answer this question, we should uh, recall the term polarization. Okay, it is not this polarization. So in case of a material, so if you take any material, any dielectric material, we can define the polarization. So most of the material will not have any inbuilt dipole moment. Some of the material uh, uh, shows the inbuilt dipole moment, okay? And some of the material induced dipole moment if you apply the external electric field. So if you take a material, the material contains uh, neutral atoms. Suppose there is no uh, free electrons. Okay, so neutral atoms means there will be positive nucleus. And there will be an electron cloud surrounding to it. Negatively charged electron cloud. So this is a usual uh, a normal picture of the dielectric. Okay. Now, if you apply the external electric field,
if we apply the external electric field, what happens is uh, uh, the, the positive uh, nucleus will try to tend uh, towards right and electron cloud will try to tend towards left. So the electron cloud will be slightly deformed. Slightly deformed like this. Okay, so that will lead to a charge separation. The center of the electron cloud and center of the nucleus uh, uh, may not coincide if you apply the, the external electric field. So that will produce an induced dipole moment. Now this induced dipole moment or dipole moment per unit volume is usually known as polarization. The dipole moment. per unit volume is called polarization. So in physics, uh, we use this uh, term in two different contexts. One is in the context of uh, the polarization of electromagnetic wave. There actually we uh, uh, discuss about um, the oscillation of electric field in the electromagnetic wave. Now this polarization is a dipole moment per unit volume and this we'll refer in the case of material. Okay, so this polarization you can denote by symbol P. Okay, now in, in linear optics, this polarization, a polarization is very fastly oscillating quantity. So better we can use this and the color. So in linear optics, uh, the polarization is a function of time. It can be written as epsilon zero, chi one, e. Okay, this tilde actually denotes uh, oscillating quantity. Okay, so this P tilde, the polarization P tilde is epsilon zero chi one ET is in case of uh, linear optics. Okay, so all this reflection, transmission, all these phenomena you can explain using this linear optics. Now, what about the nonlinearity? So the nonlinearity comes when the polarization, if the polarization depend on uh, the, the, the applied electric field nonlinearly, In nonlinear optics, we can write the polarization is epsilon zero chi one e plus epsilon zero chi two e square plus etc. What will be the next term? We can write the next term also. Epsilon zero, chi three, E cube plus etc. Okay, so when it comes, so usually uh, the second term, third term, etc. would be a very negligible. So usually we'll see only the linear optics. The nonlinear optics um, would be observable if the electric field strength is very large. So at least if the uh, the electric field uh, strength is comparable to the uh, the electric field of the atom, the atomic electric field. Then only we can observe the second order or third order term in case of polarization. So if the polarization contains the first order term in the electric field, the second order term, third order term, etc., or any nonlinear term in the polarization, then the response become nonlinear. Okay, the response become nonlinear, and uh, the corresponding optics we can call it is a nonlinear optics. Okay, so due to this nonlinear optics, uh, the many new phenomena is observed. Uh, and uh, the, the first point I want to make is uh, the nonlinear optics usually not observable uh, in general. It is observable only if the electric field strength is very large. Okay. Okay, so the nonlinear term
will be non negligible if electric field strength is very large and it is comparable to atomic electric field so what is going to be atomic electric field so in the case of an atom there will be nucleus and uh, the surrounding electron so usually we say that uh, the electron is at uh, approximately in case of uh, hydrogen atom it is at the distance of uh, a bohr radius so the electric field between them so the approximately 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 e by a0 square and we can calculate this value and if you calculate it uh, uh, this value approximately uh, is very huge value it's around uh, 10 raised to 11 volt per meter or 5 into 10 raised to 11 volt per meter okay so it's a very huge electric field so we need to produce this uh, this much of electric field in order to observe or in order to have uh, the nonlinear term in the polarization or in order to have the nonlinear response to the polarization. Now, such uh, an electric field can be produced, the huge electric field can be produced using laser. Okay. So, if you have a laser, then a very huge electric field can be produced and we may get uh, the nonlinear response. So that is why the, the first term, the nonlinear phenomena was observed just after the discovery of uh, laser. Okay, we know that uh, the laser was discovered by uh, the, the first operation laser was done by um, the theater Mayman in 1960. Then, uh, the, the first uh, nonlinear phenomena was observed in 1961, and the first nonlinear phenomena and it was second harmonic generation. And uh, it is done by uh, a team led by Franken. Okay, so this is a very interesting thing. It is uh, by using a frequency omega, we can produce a frequency two omega with the help of uh, the material. So this is uh, actually the result of uh, the nonlinear response of the material. So if the electric field strength is very large, so if the electric field strength is very large, then uh, by sending an omega frequency, you can produce a two omega frequency. The frequency can be doubled. Okay, you can convert the infrared to visible. You can convert a visible to ultraviolet. So that is possible. Okay, so this material I have written as nonlinear material. The material become nonlinear only is depending upon the, the external electric field. Okay, so some of the at present some of the uh, the laser or some of the um, the UV sources are producing this technology, uh, the second harmonic generation technology. So they will produce uh, the visible light, and it can be converted into ultraviolet light using a nonlinear crystal. Okay, and um, the infrared rays, infrared light can be converted into visible light. So basically the NDR glazer uses this uh, particular aspect. The NDR glazer output is infrared. And it can, it can uh, convert using second harmonic generation and we can produce green color. Okay, NDR glazer. The original output is
in infrared region and this can be converted into green using second harmonic generation okay so this is just one example the second harmonic generation is one example so there are many other example uh, uh, or many other applications for the nonlinear optics so i will just list list down some of the application So the first one I already discussed is a second harmonic generation. And uh, similarly, we can produce a third harmonic generation. But third harmonic generation, the efficiency would be very small compared to the second harmonic generation. And we have a phenomena called self-focusing. Okay, we can focus uh, a laser beam to one particular point without uh, the help of a lens. Okay, no need to use any lens, just use a nonlinear uh, uh, media. So basically it required a, a chi 3 nonlinearity. It's called third order nonlinearity. So if you have third order nonlinearity, we can have a self-focusing and we can have light trapping. And uh, there is phenomena called optical rectification. And uh, the, there is phenomena called some frequency generation. Some frequency generation means if you have two frequencies, omega one and omega two, we can produce omega one plus omega two using with the help of non.